of you on YouTube, this is Luckless Lovelox bringing you 80 days. We're back with it. So uh, we're trying to manage money, time, our health. So we, our health lowers as we travel. And um, we have an inventory, so we've got um, some stuff in our luggage. Stuff that helps us travel along, uh, along the way. For instance, if it's cold weather, you can get cold weather clothing. Warm weather clothing. There's timetables that tell you... Uh, different paths you can travel down. Um, there's things that let you talk to people longer to find out more information. There's a shaving kit, which allows you to kind of increase your health during the travels. And uh, all kinds of stuff. Uh, Honolulu, I'm not sure. Did I just sell something here? So different items are more valuable in different um, markets. No, 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 no. Poetry. The Amethyst? Right, Panama City, Porto Prince, Burlington. No, we're collecting a lot of like random st stuff though and not enough stuff to sell. But we still have a fair amount of money. Um, so we can always get new uh, suitcases if we run out of space. Gaston, Porto Prince, Houston. Buffalo Hyde, Acapulco, Panama City, Omaha. Weston, Valuable in Lima, Acapulco, New Orleans. Monica, Burlington. I, I might go to Burlington. I'm going to get that. I might go to New Orleans. And wasn't there something else? Porto Prince? Probably not going to happen. Alright. Um, so we could stay here for another day, but let's see if we can just take off. When is this? So when is this um, ship leaving to San Francisco? Holy, it's 1,000 pounds. We have 5,320. So that, um, banana boat departs for San Francisco tomorrow at 9 a.m. And it looks like we don't have anything, any items that we can decrease the time with. So let's, um, let's rest here for the night. And every time we rest in a town, something... <laughs> hey, I love Kill Bill. Play more than two games, you bastard. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. We'll rest here, and usually something strange will happen. And when we rest, you'll see that our, our health goes up as well. It was though Honolulu lived in one indrawn breath, a wheeling swath of sky, white-laced waves, and pristine and, and bounded by black volcanic bluffs. The town was entirely hidden behind groves of coconut and eucalyptus. Ooh. Doubt it. <laughs> we took a short tour of rest in a comfortable palm-topped hut. We might want to rest, because... I don't want our health to get too low, it's going to be a long trip. Ah, fuck it. Let's take a tour. It's more interesting that way. Take a short tour. You look, said our coach driver, Hila Hila. Sorry if I mispronounce stuff, guys. I'm trying my best. Whatever this game. <laughs> like city folk. Hmm? What do they look like? I wondered aloud. All bent and crabbed over and with your eyes fixed on the horizon, always in a rush. He murmured something to his horse, which looked well-fed and high-spirited. As a young man, I went to San Francisco to make my fortune. I too ran and scrabbled in pursuit of the almighty dollar. We are not pursuing wealth, monsieur, I corrected, though indeed Monsieur Fogg's fortune hung in the balance of his wager. Was our entire adventure merely a glorified pursuit of coin? Our adventure thus far had been somewhat harem scarum. This is a game of pronunciation. Yeah, there's a lot of words that I, like, some of them I don't understand, and some of them I would never use in casual conversation. Adventure thus far had been somewhat harem scarum. Barely had we placed our toes on dry land, that's true. Or it seems to be tra we're traveling most of the time. Um, then we were looking to depart. Oh, I had seen so many wonders, and yet each had been ultimately reduced to another mark in my master's ledger. Do you not wish the freedom to exhale, Passepartout? The coach driver asked. To stop running and simply feel the wind upon your face and the sun warming you and the sound of the ocean like a heartbeat. I'll take my moments where I may. I agree with that. Hila, hila, hila. I agreed. There is peace here. Lila, I agreed. Uh, 
There's peace here. Harmony between land and sea and sky which touches my soul. Coach Driver sighed and turned his face up to the endless sky. Man may find himself here, he told me. But only if he wishes it. He invited us to his home that evening and fed us dough like poi and bright flesh slices of orange and guava. But I still thought of the marks in Mr. Fogg's ledger. And the distances we had yet to travel. I knew no peace in Honolulu, but my purpose burned bright and drew me ever forward. We finished our night in Honolulu with a souvenir, a swirling conch shell, collected from the beach as we walked back to our lodgings. I feel like shitballs just wanted to tell Luckless I definitely play more than two. Just speak in French, Luckless. Give me something to fat. <laughs> mm. I prefer to play hard to get. Kill Bill. Conch shells should fetch a good price in Dallas should we decide to sell it. Oh, okay, cool. So we got that conch. We could do some exploring or we can get out of dodge. I think I want to get moving because we're we're running out of time. Uh, I'm a little concerned. Both cowboy boots from San Francisco. Only three uh, suitcases, so we got to hire some extra space. Fuck. We have to leave something behind. That's fine. Um, gonna go to sleep. Shitty cold off. Bye, dork, dork boy. Bye, guys. See, I killed. I hope you feel better. I, I totally, I totally feel your pain. I felt like shit for, for like almost a whole week. I don't think I can get rid of the Englishman's wardrobe set. Right. I mean, we're kind of past that. How do I... How do we get over there? It's kind of annoying. How much... Ah, no! What? Uh, fuck. Did we miss it? We missed it. Thursday, Saturday. I gotta take. I gotta take this. It's so far though. Oh, guys, I fucked up so hard. All right. It's like double the price too. I don't think we have a choice. We gotta go. It's really hard to manage this shit. False passport. I'm gonna get rid of that. No! There. Wow, huge waste of money. We boarded a sailing ship bound for Panama. Captain Lapo introduced himself briskly. Uh, leaning upon a hardwood cane. My ma was a nice Samoan fisherwoman. My papa, an Iowan. Coal hauler in harbor of Pago Pago. I inherited her broad back and his eye for a dollar. Dollar? How would a thousand pounds seem to you? The man nodded with interest. What is it you need? We need this boat to go faster. The captain considered the matter. We could perhaps shave a day from our time. Should I pay him a thousand to shave a day off? Fuck. Hey, what's up, Mo? Thanks for stopping by, dude. It's a tough call. Kind of running out of money. What about two? Two days, 2,000 pounds, he suggested. Do we have a deal? I think I can get by with 1,000. 
Made him a thousand and he clapped on me on the shoulder. I'll tell my crew to get to work, he declared. Okay, let's see where we can go from here. Greetings, Madame. Passepartout, too, you wonderful little man. Where can we go from Panama City? We need to go north. Oh, that could be... that's east, right? That's Jamaica? It's possible to go from Panama City to Freetown? Probably, but some buyers will pay well for revolvers from Freetown. But now, what do you think of my husband? Stalwart. Very stalwart and upstanding character. Those are not even his best qualities. Ooh la la. Purple Kool-Aid man! How you doing? Yeah, no, she left. She went to the... she went to bed because she wasn't feeling well. How are you doing, though? Okay, what about Freetown? Let me tell you the quickest way to Freetown from here is through Bogota. Okay. So this is how we can find out new routes to travel. To Salvador. Yeah. Surely that would not be possible. Port Novo, I don't even know where that is. Probably, but the most efficient way to Port Novo from here is through Bogota. See if we can find out more. Um, Freetown, Dakar, I believe so, one could fly aboard uh, Dahomey gyrocopter from Freetown to Dakar. Okay. Timbuk Dakar to Timbuktu? Here's something I do know, I hear Timbuktu is a good place to trade in West Africa. We might be able to go right across. Really hot here, this game looks interesting. It's really cool, I, I'm, I'm digging it. It's got like a branching storyline and it's different every time you play. Um, you can travel different routes. It's a lot of reading though. Madame Costanza, Captain Luopo's wife, served up our first, uh, our fresh caught lunch of sea fish. Though she confessed that she had not cooked it herself. Two pays the cook, she whispered. I don't have the skill. Her blonde hair was swept over her face, framing a long, jagged scar, which pinched one side of her mouth upwards. Ah. Sneaking in, saying hi, sneaking off to work. All right, Kalik, thanks for saying hi. Have a good uh, day at work. Appreciate you stopping by. Looked away from it. Could not help but look at it, and she ran a finger down its length as I watched. You don't have to pretend you don't see it, but I'm... Constanza murmured. It's hard to ignore. How did you get it? I asked, emboldened by her response. I was a threshing automaton operator. My machine threw a gear. She sucked in a breath. I was lucky to get away so lightly. I have friends who have lost entire arms and legs to such accidents. You are very lovely nonetheless, I said with gentle gallantry. Ladies, man. What's this game? Lots of text. Yeah, Mo, it's, um, it's an adaptation of uh, Around the World in 80 Days, which is a sci-fi novel. Mm. There's some game to it. There's some game to it, because you have to... It's a bit of a strategy game. You have to manage resources in order to get across the world in 80 days. So, it's... um. I'd say it's like 70% story, 30% game. Maybe 20% game. Um, there's also, like, you make important choices, dialogue choices, that can help can help you or hurt you, or at least affect the outcome of the game somewhat. Uh, so even the story is it has some gameplay to it. Hope down phonics! Um, where was I? I said with gentle gallantry, she seized a knife from the table and held it to my cheek with a sudden pained snarl. Oh, really? She breathed. Then would you like me to give you a mark like mine? I froze. And Captain Luopo appeared as if by magic and settled his arm about Madame Const Constanza's shoulders. Please, he said in tones that betokened command rather than request. Refrain from upsetting my wife. Character is now well healed. Cool.
Having managed to offend Madame Constanza the previous day, I kept very silent when another passenger asked Captain Luopo how he had injured his leg. I fought a Siberian bear, he said, with every appearance of sincerity. I cast a glance at Monsieur Fogg, who was too absorbed in making calculations in his ledger to notice. He's very, like, um, not aware of his surroundings, whereas I'm trying to be very, like, uh, exploratory. Doesn't look sci-fi-ish to me. Mustaches aren't sci-fi. It's interesting. The sci-fi, it's like a cyberpunk. Not less punk, but like, um, steampunk, sorry. Ste steampunk, uh, setting. So there's, like, automatons and, like, there's, we ran into, like, this alien-style exoskeleton with someone piloting it at one point. Um, there's, like, airships, uh, like, uh, submarine trains, things like that. So it's it's kind of like um Oh shit. Just one second. I gotta plug my laptop in. Just one minute. I just saved your lives, guys. I was about to lose. I was about to lose you all. But it's okay. I plugged you in. Plugged you in. You're safe. So I, I monitor my chat on my laptop. So if I ran out of batteries, you guys would all disappear. And since you only exist in this laptop, you would, you would all die. You ever notice how nobody ever has mustaches in sci-fi stuff? That's not true. Um, I was watching Prometheus the other day. The captain has a mustache in that. Thanks. <laughs> That's all I get, Tonic Feline, for saving your life. Just thanks. Ricker? Is that the name of the captain? Okay, um, right. Yeah, it's kind of like, it's very, like, low on the sci-fi meter, but it's still, like, Around the World in 80 Days is, like, one of the most famous sci-fi novels. Yeah, Riker, yeah. Riker from Star Trek. Although, he's got a goatee as well. Um... I heard one of the navigators that you took a dagger to the knee in a duel with a beautiful pirate captain. Captain Lobo smiled. One of the engineers raised his mug. No, I heard you were mauled by a shark off Oahu. Don't be silly, interjected a coal hauler. It was a Haitian Uvri who used the captain's blood for a spell. I don't know if I pronounced that right. Thank you for saving my virtual presence, Master. That's better. That's better, Tonic. Um, I looked at Madame Constanza, whose eyes were cast down demurely, though there was a bright smile on her lips. Oh no, she interjected in her soft tones. Vicky took his wound, rescuing a princess held captive by an evil lord. Constanza, Constanza, Captain Lopo chuckled. You have it backwards. It was the princess that wounded me. You mind being struck in the heart? And the crew erupted into good-natured laughter, which carried on well into the night. Switch Mobile App 6. I haven't had too many problems with it, but I don't use it that often. So you see, um... Monsieur Fogg's health going down. The ship had made, uh, stupendous progress. Madame Constanza knocked on my door in the afternoon. 
We're nearing Panama, she said, pulling shyly at her blonde braid. Ooh. You should gather your things. Sorry for any offense I caused you. Shook rather wrong-footed by my declaration and then nodded once decisively. Be wary of the Haitian automata in Panama, she whispered. Will they come at me with a knife, I replied. Also hotel internet. Oh, cool. Whereabouts are you, Mo? 9A3ED is an um, old university friend. His real name's Mohammed, though. I call him Mo. Um, well, come at me with a knife, I replied. She glared back, then hurried away, and I disembarked the ship with my master and greeted Panama City. Cool. Let's hope we can make some money. Several of our possessions would sell efficiently here. Hope so. Acapulco port. Mm. Not really. New Orleans is where we want to go. Port au Prince would be good too. Dallas. Paint him a hit. Hey, Venedax. What's up? Welcome. Port Royal, Acapulco, San Francisco. Houston, San Francisco. Okay. I don't need that. Antique map. In Dakar. Okay, so we want to. Sorry, we want to get to New Orleans would be good. Porto Price, New Orleans. Porto Price or New Orleans. We can sell that stuff. So we've got to stay in a hotel for the day. Pass the night here. Sup. Panama City seemed a town perpetually on the edge of disaster. Great number of the old inhabitants of great number of the inhabitants had immigrated to California during the gold rush twenty years ago. Forty niners as they were called. Had left empty spaces which were quickly filled by new immigrants, creating a multiracial polyglot society. I admired the Panamanian spirit. The town was a bricolage, a nation created from whatever materials were available. With all the anarchic strength of such an origin, of course there was the canal. The French had bought the rights of construction from the Colombians. Oh, that's right. But quickly ceded those rights to the Haitians. Really enjoyed uh, your political comments earlier today on Clint's channel. I think you're a cool dude. Oh, thanks, Venet Dax. I'm not afraid to, um, to tell people what I think. I think you're a cool dude, too. I, um, I... I totally enjoy having those types of conversations. That's one of the reasons why I stream. I I want to have um, interesting conversations with people. It's not just um, um, not just like about games. Although I I do like talking about games, game design, and you know what's good in a game, what's bad in a game, and uh, talk about the meanings of stories and symbolism in games, but also about real life too. Quickly seated those rights to the Haitians. After disease decimated their engineering corps, Haitians now virtually ran the city with their foreign wealth. So the local rumor went, the blood-drinking voodoo machines they used to dig up the canal. I cannot help but be curious. Oh, I'm particular about the supposedly mystical machines. So I'm, I'm kind of investigating um, kind of like the engineering aspect of this world. In another playthrough, I might go down a different path. Um, they were elephant-sized steam shovels painted bright red and blue. Dyed rooster feathers adorned the boiler, and single operator sat in the carriage to control the winch, boom, and bucket. Great quantities of stone and dirt were being thrown into the air, undercut by the whistle of steam escaping and boilers rumbling. As I watched, a tall, sharp-eyed fellow in pinstripe suit glared at me. You're here to watch or work? 
about <laughs> about 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 hey sassy sassy likes my uh, Canadian abouts and my dimples I try to I try to oblige her as much as possible um my name is Pascal too I declared I'm Gesner, the crew leader, and I don't allow any watching on my dig site. He pointed to one of the steam shovels. Get in. I complied. Without a second thought, perhaps it was the authority in Gesner's voice. Perhaps I was rather too enamored of the enormous power of the steam shovels. Gesner Jr. will lead you right, he pronounced with finality, caressing the bucket of the great machine. Yash, damn dimples. Oh, damn dimples. You called your machine after your own name? I marveled at his hubris. I designed all the steam shovels, but Fanchon gave them life. She's headed back to Haiti tomorrow morning. I don't know what I'll do without her. He nodded towards a tall black woman who was checking the fuel barrels, occasionally dipping a finger in Atari black substance and tasting it. Who doesn't? Enough talk. Time to dig. Examine the, le the levers closely before selecting the most worn handle and easing it forward. The winch squealed and began to raise the boom with a vibration that I could feel in my bones. After a few cautious experiments, I fell into a rhythm. Raise the bucket, scoop the packed earth, unload, and rumble forward. You're born excavator! Gesner showered me with praise. You sure you've not done this before? As I worked, I saw the woman called Fanchung move away from the site. If she was an artificer, perhaps she would be useful. But my shovel would not be stopped or slowed, and I worked into the night. Can't stop my shovel. Uh, we still can't leave. Weird. Guess a lot to do some exploring. So, oh, that's why we didn't have any routes to take. I feel like if I go to South America, I'm going to be wasting too much time. During the day, I strolled the streets only to find myself face to face with Fancha and the engineer. Gasner had pointed out to me at the works. Ah, uh, the visitor from France! She smiled lopsidedly. You come to take back your canal. Will not be so easy. She raised her fists playfully. I must ask, do the shovels really run on blood? She smiled. <laughs> yes, that's what they say. I've heard it. Is it true? Blood is a terrible fuel. We would all be using it instead of coal or gasoline. We Haitians make our own organic fuel. Cannot rely on imports, you see. She explained, but did not elaborate further upon the exact constitu constituents of the mixture. See, this is what I mean by, like, science fiction. It's not like... It's not like... Unbelievable science fiction. It's like... It's literally, like, fictional science. <laughs> I was told you were leaving town. Luckless's voice gave me vibrations in particular places. Ha! <laughs> Oh god, sassy. You're gonna make me blush. Old timey porn. <laughs> Does it help? Does it help he's reading old timey porn? Martian science? Um. I was told you're leaving town, I said. She nodded. I am indeed. I have a um, little craft of my own devising, but I need a few parts. You know how these things are. Oh, craft, sorry. What did I say? Yeah, craft. Is it a fast craft? She nodded. When she works. My master and I are going around the world, I declared. How exciting for you, she replied. I do not think she meant it. And her eyes were moving away into the middle distance. Perhaps we could travel with you? I asked, when your craft is repaired. She looked at me as though judging my character by inferring the way my parts fit together. After our sass, the best sass. I like it. I like it, sass. So I say it will take some time to repair or some manpower. Time and manpower. Both realized by one thing. Name your price, I told her. She named a figure and it made my eyes water slightly. Well? I'll ask my master. Muttered and crept quickly away. Very good, she replied. I bid Madame Fanchon goodbye. At least until we decided whether we could afford such help as hers.
Oh, Sasa, wow. Should we leave you two alone? <laughs> oh. Really is late night sassy. Um. Very good, she replied. I bid Madame Fenchin goodbye, at least until we decided whether we could afford such help as hers. I made my way back to Monsieur Fogg, only to find myself accosted by a group of Panamanian dynamite blasters. Man, this, this story doesn't stop. They were a mix of city boys and Choco immigrants from the villages, netted by their dislike of the Haitian digging crew. They seemed keen to talk. We are leaving Panama before our blood ends up in a vat. You should leave too if you have any sense. I like it when people watch. Damn. Damn. Where are you headed? We are making for Tabatingo in the Amazonas. Shafil gave me a considering look. We may have some space for men of talent and determination. Considered their offer as I headed back to my lodgings. Men who spent their days blasting through mountains could prove to be useful travel companions if we wished to head into the interior of this vast continent. Ah, okay, so we found new routes. That's what we wanted, right? Okay, let's take a look what we can do. Porto Prince. 8,000? I don't know if I'm that kind of person. <laughs> you will be. Oh, you will be. Fuck me. How much is this? 110 to Bogota? Tabatingo? This is just so far out of my way. I don't want to go... I don't want to go south. I want to go north. <sighs> Fuck. Hired carriage to parts of Acapulco in three days at 6pm. Quite sure this... Departure could be altered. Let's go to Acapulco. The American Stute should yield results. I think it would require a further 320 pounds. Okay. That's fine. So it leaves tomorrow, so I'll have to rest here um, overnight. I might as well spend some time at the bank. Approach the bank of Panama only to have our entrance barred. You don't look like, a Haitian, like Haitians to me, the doorman remarked apologetically. Uh, we're European, I replied cautiously. This bank is only available to Haitians. My apologies for your waste of time. Or for your waste of visit. He gestured for us to step away. It's ridiculous, I complained. The doorman shrugged. We've worked very hard to secure our independence from the French in the United States, he replied. We intend to keep it that way by any means at our disposal, monsieur. There's nothing we could do. We turned away. Okay. So I'll have to wait. Pass the night here. As night fell, went to stretch my legs and found a cheerful artist who had a mislaid locket, which I spotted and who then, between fits of laughter, let it slip that the most efficient way to Tabatinga is through Bogota. I thanked him, and he smiled and went about his affairs. Keep, people keep losing lockets in this game, I've noticed that. Okay, we're going to Acapulco. Go. It's going to be slow moving though. One could hire a Kalich to travel length of Central America along which is a which a good quality road had been established. There was only one curiosity. Alright, the pants are off. Excellent, Sassy. Uh, there was no driver. Oh. The carriage ran itself on a system of wheels, cogs, and leather straps. Here's your sci-fi mo. What if we encounter an unexpected obstacle, I demanded of my master, or a gap in the road? Confident the makers of this device will have considered that, he replied as he stepped aboard. Come! Would that I shared that confidence, my friends. Let's see what's going on in the news. Cholera spreading from Manila aboard airships. Airships. I thought, <laughs> I thought that was standard for the stream. It is, yeah. It is very standard. Everyone should uh, be disrobing right now. On the map, the road to Acapulco seems to trace a hairline route 
along the curve of Central America, and I half expected the Kelich to teeter uh, left and right between the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. Good times, good times. Reality, of course, geography is much more expansive. So instead, we rode through long grasslands that flowed down from the sides of mountains. Steering was automatic, another plus, since I did not want to take responsibility for driving at such speed. The gauge installed by the crafty builders of the mechanical horse showed the distance to our destination. As computed by the remaining steam pressure in the engine, which I realized meant that uh, should we be hit by unexpected delay, we might well run out of oomph before reaching our destination. Read right along in this contraption, my master and I for once absolutely alone. Characters now zestful. <laughs> my turn. Yeah, I'll get I'll get banned from Twitch if I do that. <laughs> On your second day, the carriage screeched to a sudden halt. Someone had laid a log across the road. I got out to move it, but as soon as my feet hit the dust, there was a shout: "Don't move!" We're taking your vehicle. Show yourselves, I called back, whirling about. I won't fire if you don't. A lone figure rose from behind a rock, sighting along the barrel of a gun. My own Smith & Wesson was in my hands. I just want the vehicle. I called in a thick Mexican accent. That, that was not a thick Mexican accent. <laughs> Twitch can't handle it. Yeah, the stream would immediately shut down. Um, it's got nipple detectors. Nipple detectors, it'll like, it's an algorithm that scans the whole picture and determines if there's any nipples on the broadcaster showing, and if, if there are, then boom. Stream shuts down and you're you're immediately permabanned. Um, don't want to hurt you, but I will. Where are you going? I demanded. Perhaps we can give you a ride. Figure took a few tentative steps down the hillside. That was when I noticed Monsieur Fogg creeping through scrub around the back of the college. I decided to keep the figure talking. I must have been waiting here a long time, I said. We have water. Surely you're thirsty. What do you care if I'm thirsty? Demanded the figure. Nipplegate. All I close breaks the internet with my nipples. <laughs> Read the nipples. Um, be careful on Thursday, demanded the figure, Monsieur Fogg was creeping ever closer. Gesture of friendship, I replied, we mean you no harm. Monsieur Fogg now scrambled a little way up the mountainside and was behind the figure. What his plan was now, I could not guess. I could hardly imagine him braining the bandit with a rock like a caveman. Stay there, stay there, I said, I'll, I'll bring some to you. Stay back, the bandit shouted suddenly, alarmed, perhaps sensing the balance of the situation was shifting. At that moment, Monsieur Fogg stood up directly behind the figure. Covered my eyes, expecting violence. But he only spoke. Now then, my master said sensibly, perhaps we can all get on with our journey. The figure whirled about to face Monsieur Fogg. And I rushed forward and knocked them both down. A bullet fired, but went harmlessly into the air. Monsieur Fogg kept the bandit covered while I moved the log from the road on my own, a Herculean task that took an embarrassingly long time and much puffing. Now then, I said, red-faced and panting, we keep the gun? And you should be on your way. Lydia removed her kerchief and tilted her head. Where are you going? So now you want to lift. <laughs> it depends. Where are you going? Acapulco? She shrugged, sat down in the middle of the road. I'd like to go to Acapulco as well, but perhaps you'll run over me. Get in. The finest decent company. She removed her kerchief and spat. Very well. Together we boarded the Kelech and rode in stony silence at Acapulco. Maybe she'll give us a hand there. That was exciting. We completed our ride into Acapulco. The lady's name was Catalina Barraza, and she was going nowhere. 
Instead, she was running away. What from? The working conditions in the factory where I'm employed. Here there's a better life to be had in Acapulco. I can no longer care not to try it out. But how did you end up midway there? That was not midway, she replied. I'm from San Miguel. Strange to think there are places in the world not in our map. I tend to think of the gaps between major ports as blank space. I, uh... <laughs> No, I definitely can't do that either. I tend to think of the spaces between big cities on maps as blank spaces too, but there's there's a lot there. We rode the rest of the way in silence and we're grateful to disembark the Kalich and stretch our legs. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right. Kalich? Kalichi? So our possessions would trade well. Okay, so do we have anything that we can sell in Acapulco? Nope. Think so? No. Got a blank six. <laughs> Damn. Sassy's firing on uh, all cylinders tonight. Dominoes. I'm carrying carrying entirely too much crap. <sighs> Sugar cane. Um, I don't want that. I'll take the sugar cane instead because I'm going to go to San Francisco. Dallas, New Orleans, Puerto Prince. Get that too. One, two, three, four, five. I don't know if I'm going to be able to carry all that stuff. <laughs> Gotta let it loose. It's true. Exactly how many guns do you think we need past about two? That's funny. Um, let's explore. So we can go from here. The French had tenuous hold of the Mexican port of Acapulco. I've been to Acapulco. The bay was crowded with ships firing upon each other, and airships rained fire and misery down upon the slope-roofed buildings. French soldiers fought Mexicans in the smoke wreath streets. We decided to explore the city, better to find a way to leave. Du -du -du. Kept the French held docks. Kept the French held docks, we headed away from the fighting. In warehouses, where our white skin and my command of the mother tongue kept us from suspicion. You're not soldiers, the soot stained sous lieutenant remarked, clutching his rifle close. This is a dangerous place for a civilian. It's a dangerous place for soldiers, too, I retorted with ill grace. What is the French army doing here? Something about the Mexican government's debts, the Sioux lieutenant shrugged. Hate this goddamn city. Why don't you leave? I shouted back. Leave this place? Leave the army? He shook his head, looking sick. Then what would I do? Go be a farmer in Provence, I shrugged. Surely anything is better. Keep your head down, the Sioux lieutenant roared as a rope of fire lit a nearby building. It led us to a warehouse which had been converted to a makeshift garrison. My master and I huddled there until evening fell. The bombardment of Acapulco paused for the night, but we still did not have a way out. Sassy is really Taylor Swift, I would lose my mind. <laughs> what is this? Why is everyone, like, obsessed with Taylor Swift? She's all... She's just like... She's like just bones. She's like a... Rack of bones. She needs to get some meat on her. Dazzle for life. Did you win? Did you you won, right, Chris? What did I tell you? You just gotta keep the bad players alive and you'll win the game. And uh thanks for stopping by, Chris. Have a good night. Two in a row. What did I tell you, man? If you want to move up in MMR, you just gotta play uh you gotta play healing supports. <laughs>